Looking for a classic Hollywood flick that packs a punch? Look no further than Hard Times. This gritty 1975 film stars Charles Bronson as a drifter who finds himself in the world of bare-knuckle street fighting during the Great Depression. But this movie isn't just about the action. It's got plenty of funny, shocking, and sad moments too. So keep your eyes peeled for those twists and turns. Now, who was your favorite classic Hollywood actor in this movie? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. And if you've got a personal story about how hard times has impacted you, we want to hear it. Share your cherished memories and experiences below. We can't wait to read them all. Walter Hill's Hard Times presents a gritty depiction of bare-knuckle street fighting woven with themes of financial hardship and flawed characters. Unlike The Sting, which focuses on elaborate cons, the movie delves into the raw physicality of men facing off. Charles Bronson delivers a captivating performance as the mysterious Cheney, with James Coburn portraying the charming yet troubled gambler. Jill Ireland also plays a significant role, adding to the overall impact of the film. Hill's direction keeps the story moving briskly, with no unnecessary moments. The fight scenes are intense and realistic, enhancing the authenticity of the film's setting. While some might be surprised by the lack of melodrama, this restraint sets it apart, giving it a fresh quality. Bronson's performance is particularly noteworthy, exuding a sense of primal power akin to folk music. Every glance and gesture carries weight, even if his stoicism sometimes borders on lethargy. Overall, the movie showcases Hill's filmmaking skill and Bronson's underrated talent, making it a standout in both of their careers. In a 26 interview, director Walter Hill mentioned his criticism of Jill Ireland's performance, who was Charles Bronson's wife at the time. When he discussed this with Bronson at his home, Bronson didn't shake his hand, but poured him a drink instead. Hill expressed interest in working with Bronson again, but Bronson declined. A local New Orleans dealer, Gabriel Puccio, provided several cars for the movie, including James Coburn's 1936 Packard 120 sedan. Puccio became a frequent visitor to the set and was eventually cast as a hood working for Coburn's rival. Puccio planned to display the Packard in the theater lobby after filming ended. According to Walter Hill, Charles Bronson, who was about 52 at the time, was in remarkable physical condition with excellent coordination and a splendid build. However, being a smoker, he lacked stamina, although he could still handle fights well for a short duration. Producer Lawrence Gordon, a Yazoo City native and Chilean University graduate, insisted on setting the film in New Orleans. Gordon appreciated the unique background and accents, making it special and homey for him. Walter Hill, the director, aimed to elevate the project by giving it a Western touch, drawing inspiration from his earlier work, Lloyd Williams and his brother. The script, influenced by Alex Jacobs, adopted an extremely spare, almost haiku style in both stage directions and dialogue. The film utilized various New Orleans locations to depict the gritty atmosphere. The Irish Channel showcased seedy spots, while St. Vincent de Paul Cemetery on Desire Street became the forlorn backdrop for Charles Bronson's encounter with Poe, played by Struther Martin. The Ninth Ward, particularly the freight yard near the Mississippi River, provided a raw setting where Bronson dispatched both his scheduled opponent and a chain-wielding poor loser who bet on the wrong fighter. The decision to set the film in New Orleans added a distinct flavor to hard times, enhancing its authenticity and giving it a unique atmosphere. The utilization of specific locations contributed to the film's portrayal of the rough and tough environment, making it an integral part of the narrative. In summary, Lawrence Gordon's insistence on a New Orleans setting and Walter Hill's Western-inspired approach combined with authentic locations shaped hard times into a gritty and atmospheric film that stood out in its portrayal of a bygone era. It effectively blended elements of the past with the unique charm of New Orleans. Director Walter Hill faced a setback when he approached Charles Bronson for his next film after hard times. Bronson declined due to issues with the treatment of his then-wife and co-star. As a result, Ryan O'Neill took the lead role, leading to a lasting rift between Bronson and Hill. Despite controversies, Hard Times raked in $5.11 million in rentals, a success noted by show business trade paper variety. Even years later, in 2009, Walter Hill was still profiting from the film. The movie's profitability underscores its enduring appeal and financial success. In a 2007 DGA interview, Walter Hill recalled how Charles Bronson helped him resolve conflicts and get through the shoot since he was a first-time director. 
Hill remembered a particular incident during the Cajun sequence where he and James Coburn argued about staging. Feeling frustrated, Hill threw his script, which was unusual for him. Bronson intervened, siding with Hill, which resolved the impasse. The filming location for Speedweed's home was actually New Orleans Cornstalk Hotel. Charles Bronson spent breaks either sitting off in a corner or channeling his nervous energy into physical feats like flexing his biceps and running up walls. Meanwhile, James Coburn and the other actors would watch football games on a portable television set. When shooting resumed, Bronson and Nick Dimitri were sprayed with water to enhance the realism of their fight scenes. In hard times, Charles Bronson performed most of his stunts, showcasing his physical prowess. The movie embraced the gritty side of New Orleans, notably in a bordello scene filmed on Jackson Street. While the location wasn't authentic, reports suggest that a significant portion of the extras were genuine. Interestingly, the film's interiors were shot discreetly elsewhere. Walter Hill, both writer and director, worked for scale, expressing his passion for the project by stating he would have paid for the opportunity. His dedication shines through in the raw and captivating portrayal of the story. In 1975, director Walter Hill made his debut with a film originally titled Street Fighter, later changed to Hard Times. The movie introduces a character named Street, the ultimate fighter brought in to challenge Hard Times. Set in New Orleans, the film showcases glimpses of the city's French Quarter, including the Cornstalk Hotel. In one scene, the main character reveals his profession of street fighting to his associate, while another scene features the hotel as the residence of a gambler promoter. The quarter also serves as the backdrop for a confrontation between the main character and the slick promoter. Overall, the movie offers a gritty portrayal of underground street fighting in New Orleans, with memorable scenes set against the city's famous landmarks. Director Walter Hill originally wanted Warren Oates to play Walter Speedweed. The movie was originally longer, but was later shortened to about 90 minutes, cutting out some fight scenes. Even though these scenes were removed, some pictures of them have been found. Interestingly, the settings in the video game Street Fighter were inspired by this movie. In Japan, the movie is called The Street Fighter, and the game designer was told to get ideas from it, which led to many parts being directly copied. The influence of hard times goes beyond just the movie industry, leaving a lasting impact on arcade gaming. Charles Bronson commanded a salary of around $1 million for his role in the film, according to writer-director Walter Hill. The movie shares its title with an unrelated literary work by Charles Dickens and another by Robert Louis Stevenson. Cinematographer Philip H. Lathrop faced numerous challenges shooting on real sets instead of a soundstage requiring inventive solutions. Lathrop explained, it's a wholly different type of treatment because you're working on actual sets and you have to invent a lot of different things that you need not do in the studio where you can remove a wall or have lights above on the scaffolds. But it gets done.